What's up, everybody? Welcome to Belglade, Florida. This is Jose. And Katie. And we're gonna drive through Belglade, Florida. This town has been on YouTube quite a bit. It's a very uh, popular destination for YouTubers who enjoy the real streets of Florida. Tonight, we're gonna drive through Belglade on a Monday night. It is 57 degrees, nice and cool. We're gonna explore the root streets of Belle Glade at night. The root streets of Belle Glade on a Monday night. It's not a Friday night, it's not as lively as a Monday night, but we'll see how the town's looking today. Belle Glade, people have come from uh, a lot of places to look at these videos. Uh, there's a YouTube channel called Charlie Boo. A lot of our subscribers watch him, he's been here. Another YouTube channel, it's, I think it's a newer channel called Hood Time. And that channel's also been here. So it seems like a lot of the YouTube channels that are pretty big that do kind of like neighborhood tours and stuff have come through here. Um, it is a unique town. It has a very island feel to it. The, uh, the architecture of the buildings and stuff and just the general vibes of this place are very Caribbean. So it's got it's a very unique town in South Central Florida, just south of Lake Okeechobee. And Lago Okeechobee. Let's take a ride to Rug Lake tonight and see what it looks like on a quiet evening. Let's see what it looks like. I'm ex I think we should go to Puerto Rico, like ASAP. We don't need a passport to go to Puerto Rico. This is what Puerto Rico looks like at night. Like this is exactly what like I I, I found this YouTube channel that does drive around to Puerto Rico, and this is kind of what it looks like. The only difference is that Puerto Rico kind of looks more um. Well, this YouTube channel, the, the, the camera quality is not that great. The, it's not like a great quality video. I'm, I'd be excited to get down there and check it out. Why is this person right next to us? I'm gonna move forward. Oh, he's just cleaning his business. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I ain't right. Dude was like right next to my car. He's like, what are you doing? Cleaning up the sidewalk like he should be. Mm -hmm. Keeping his business looking good. It's okay to be a little paranoid. We've, we've been to so many places recently. We've been to Detroit, Chicago, Philadelphia, East St. Louis. So we're kind of paranoid. Mm -hmm. But ain't nothing like Florida, man. You still got the singular wireless logo. I should do a walk around video at night. I bet that would get more views than a drive around. Mm -hmm. It looks pretty quiet. I think I should do a walk around yeah. video at night. Yeah. Walking around bug at night. I mean, crap, after some of the places we've been to lately, this is like yeah. a walk in the park compared. Although some people say Bell Glade's like one of the worst places lately because it looks different, you yeah. know? I'm not, this is a normal town, really. Singular was bought by AT&T when we were in high school. According to uh, USA Today, Yeah. They did a list of the 50 worst, 50 worst uh, towns in America, and Bugley was on the list of the worst towns in America. Um, and noted that what the housing, not so much crime and stuff like that, but one of the their biggest contributing factor was the cost of living. According to them, uh, was unaccessible to the residents. In other words. You know, if you live here, you'll never make enough money to live here, which is kind of ironic that, you know, they could have noted crime, they could have noted a, a thousand things, you know, but what they noted, what they noted was, out of all the things they could have noted, was that the cost of living, interesting that that's the motive they, they put it as the worst, one of the worst, fifth, you know, according to the USA Today, which is a freaking big magazine, by the way, very respected magazine. Mm -hmm. And they noted it as, as newspaper. a newspaper, right? Yeah, you know, they noted it as one of the 50 worst places in America. This town right here, one of the 50 worst places in America to live. And um, it wasn't the only Florida town on the list. It noted uh, Florida City and Beverly Hills, surprisingly, was on the list. Mm. The first one on the list, number 50, was Beverly Hills. I found that kind of interesting because if you go to Beverly Hills and it doesn't even look bad at all, yeah, and the housing is affordable, and the housing is affordable. They get noted poverty and a bunch of other reasons <coughs> for being one of the worst places in the country. 
but this is according to USA Today. Not according to me, don't get mad at me. I'm, I'm going by USA Today. According to their magazine, this is one of the worst places in the USA. Yeah. Again, not, not according to me, according to USA Today. What caught me off guard was a reason. The reason that the reason they think it's bad is because what it you know what you'll make here will never be enough to actually afford a liquor, which brings up the question how do crap do people make in South Florida? Bellglade had in the last year, um, I'll give you guys some interesting real estate uh, analysis here. This town had in the last year almost a 35% increase in real estate prices in one year. So you guys know people are moving to Florida and all that. Of course, they're not moving to Bellglade out of all places. They're not moving to Bellglade. When you move to Florida, you don't move to Bellglade, but you might move to like Naples or Tampa or you know something like that. You're not moving to Bellglade. But Bellglade's real estate prices went up 36% in one year. That is insane. It was the highest out of all the, um, you know, real estate areas in the state has the highest real estate appreciation. And not because, not because it's like all of a sudden Bill Glade became a place people are moving to or, or it's getting gentrified or none of that. It's none of that. It's just, that's how hard life is out here. That from one end, from one year to the other, a house that was, you know, 100,000, now sort of 146,000, you know, in one year. It got that much worse. In, in a one year period, it got that bad. That's very, very depressing because wages did not go up 36% in one year, but housing did. You know, and it's just investors capitalizing on the poverty of it really and, and, and that's kind of what holds back florida is people come from new york and other states or other parts of florida even and they capitalize on the poverty of these small towns you know it's nothing more than you know the poverty of this place is nothing more than people capitalizing on the poverty by providing jobs like um for example agriculture dead end jobs that don't lead, you know, they don't bring, you know, small towns in Alabama, they'll get a plan. Honda's in Alabama. Mercedes Benz is in Alabama. You know what I mean? Mercedes Benz is in Alabama. Honda's in Alabama. All that industry gets put into those places to give the people that live there the opportunity to make decent wages. So even though they're poor places, they provide opportunity for their people to get ahead. Now, here's a place where there are no opportunities to get ahead, only jobs are in agriculture, and they're fighting to keep it that way. They're fighting to make it hard. There's, instead of people fighting to give the people better opportunities, there's people fighting to make it harder. Now you got a place where there's no opportunity, all the jobs are agriculture related. They don't bring industry here like, like they do in Alabama. Because I was friends with uh, the mayor of one town in Alabama. He even gave us an interview. You know, he, he gave us an interview of, of uh, this, you know, for his town. And there was a company coming in. I think it was part of Honda or Mercedes Benz. I can't remember exactly which company it was, but there was one company that was coming into town, and they were going to lease a building. And the mayor of the city said hold on before you open your uh your little company how much are you going to pay the workers and i think he wanted the mayor of the city said if you're going to open your plant in our city you have to pay the i can't remember what the amount was but i think he said something like 14 dollars was that a gunshot no i think he said something like 14 dollars an hour or 15 it was like a lot of money like it was like the mayor of the city said okay if you're moving to our town you're coming to our town and you're opening up businesses in our town. This is how much money you're going to have to pay the workers. If you're not going to pay the workers that much money, you're not even allowed to start a business in our town. 
But I found it interesting that in Alabama, that's a type of proactive approach the mayors and, and the people have to making sure that their people get good, good jobs and good opportunities. The mayor of the city said, before you lease that building, how much are you gonna pay the workers? Because they wanted to pay like, and it wasn't, they were gonna pay like 13 or $12 an hour. But he said, nope, if you're not gonna pay more than, uh, than whatever he wanted, which is quite a bit, more than what the company was willing to pay, they couldn't get the lease for the building. Or if they did, they weren't gonna be able to get their business license. But in Florida, nobody's fighting and you guys like identical to ours. It's even got no, not the same wheels, but very close. Mm -hmm. very, very similar. Mm -hmm. But in Florida, there's nobody fighting to make sure that the people in these poor places get better opportunities. What there is, is people taking advantage of the poverty to exploit the people that are here. Creating jobs in agriculture, um, real estate mongling, you know, land, 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 landlording. I would say slumlording is probably a better term. You know, and that's keeping um, the people in these places. If you wonder what makes these places in Florida so poor, is that nobody's looking out to make it a better place. There's people looking out to take advantage of the poverty here. Like I said, real estate prices increasing 30 some percent in a year in a place where what, what what's contributed to this place being more poor. Definitely not any better than it was in the past. But that's the reality of Florida, man. It's a tough place to live. It is a tough, tough place to live. You know, and some of these places in Central Florida, like Highlands County is a good example. Uh, the, the people that own all the land and all the real estate and all that, they're actually not even fighting for the people. They're fighting to keep the people down so they can stay on top. Like if you, if you, I find a lot of people ask me about Sebring, Florida, you know, would you move to Sebring, Florida? I looked into moving to Sebring, Florida because it's more affordable. Um, but the problem with Sebring, Florida was that you can't, they don't even make it to where you can get a business license there. They make it to where you can't even get a business license in Sebring. Um, you know, they make it to where you can't even get a business license. They literally make it that hard. Like the requirements to get a, a regular business license in Sebring, Florida are so complicated that most small businesses can't even afford, um, most small businesses can't even afford the notion of doing it. Like I looked into opening a small business in, in Lee County, Florida, where I live in Fort Myers. It cost me, it cost me 30, 30, what was my business license, 36 hours? Yeah. Yeah. My business license was $36 in Fort Myers, which by the way, ain't a bad place to have a business. Well, I mean, it hasn't been great for us so far, but but the license was cheap, you know? But the same exact um, type of business license, and um, I hope I don't get a cop. Talk, just talk, just talk. Yeah. Bring it a copyright strike, just make noise. Like, wow, uh, <laughs> no copyright strike, please no copyright strike. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna cover a strike. Yeah. That's so loud. I don't wanna have to edit the video either. But anyways, th this business license requirement just makes some background noises. Just be like, wah, yeah, while I'm talking. And the business requirements would have costed something like, would have been like six, six to seven thousand dollars. Six to seven thousand dollars. Okay, okay, we're good. We're past it. Thank you for making noise. Six to seven thousand dollars is what I what I calculated would cost for like to have a business license your first year in, in Seabrook, Florida. Why do they make it that hard in a place where they actually need, okay, you can GPS for Palm Beach. Okay. Get up out of here. Why would they make it that hard for you, right? Why would they make it that hard to get a business license? Well, because the people that own all the land and own all the um, everything, really, they own the land, they own uh, all those all the oranges the big industry in that county they don't want you to be self-employed because if you're self-employed they can exploit you so they make it hard for you to get a business license they make it expensive and difficult feet, make a u-turn at southwest 8th street they make, make a u-turn difficult for you look at that jacked up truck bro 
They make it difficult for you to get a business license, bro. Like, they purposely make a U turn, purposely make it as difficult as they can for you to make get a business a license. I will, sir. Turn left. So, that's the town of Hamal, Florida, where it's a place that's set up not for the people turn to get left. ahead, it's set then up for like. Turn left. It's set up for like the businesses to exploit the people. <laughs> it's really, it's not set up for the people to get ahead. It's set up for the companies to exploit you. The truck is sick. The truck is pimp. <laughs> I would probably, I feel like we should do a walk around video at night. That would really like blow up. I don't think it be, we, we've done videos tonight here. Remember what time we did walk around video tonight? Oh, you weren't with me. That was me and dad. Me and dad actually walked around here tonight and recorded everything. And I think it was like Martin Luther King Day or something. It was like packed. Or brown sugar. It was something. I can't remember what it was. It was like some type of event. There's brown sugar out here? No, that's in Cluiston. It was something. There was like thousands of people. I mean, like that walk around recorded. Nobody gave us any trouble. Nobody said anything. Like, it was really legitly shit. Like, it was just, we did our thing and nobody bothered us. Mm -hmm. Like, people here just mind their own business. They don't really see anything. We were recording, too. All right, so what, what are we doing here? Left at the light. Turn left. But it, it is frustrating how in Florida, man, like, we can't get anything, anything to get ahead, man. Like, nothing. Like, we cannot... We can't get the investments we need. We can't get companies to come in and get people jobs. It's like everything is set up to keep the working class people poor. It's a state that's set up to keep you poor, man. In 1,000 feet, turn right onto West Canal Street North, West Lake Road. Like most states try to give the people like as much opportunity as they can florida tries to make life as a, you know how much it costs like my car still registered it with alabama tags it costs like what 800 dollars to register the car mm -hmm. yeah it's gonna Turn cost right us to eight, Canal 700 or 800 dollars to register our car with, to get florida tags on our car what was it in alabama 36 dollars 38 less less than that really i thought it was like 20 dollars yeah something. In Alabama, if you're buying a car, putting, you know, getting tags or whatever, it's like 40 bucks, 46 dollars, I think it was. I'm like, exact game. All right. All right. All right. You know, like 40 some dollars or something. It was like nothing. I don't know what it costs to register. It's like insignificant to register a car in Alabama. Bro, changing my Alabama tags into a Florida tag is going to cost me like 700 dollars. It's just wild how how hard it make life in Florida. Yep. Turn left onto Florida 15, North and, Florida. And again, like East. USA Today, when they're rating the worst 50 worst towns in the country, according to them, Bugway is is worthy a lot less, and they noted just that same exact thing, which is. Um, how just the, like the cost of living here doesn't equate it's like not even realistic like, the cost of living here it's unrealistic what's the truck back And then you got people that live out here and then they like defend like the sugar industry. They're like, oh, it's the, oh, great jobs. I'm like, great jobs? Are you kidding me? Like the poverty rate in some of these towns out here is so bad. And then there's people that live out here and then since that's how they make a living, they defend it. But what they don't realize is how bad of a living it really is. There's a few famous football players from Bobby. Can you look it up and see who they are? There's like a few like football players from here. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. I guess people from Miami come hang out over here too. When there's like parties and stuff and events. 
The glare, bro. The glare, the glare. Rydell Anthony. Uh huh, yep. Brad Banks. Yep. Kevin. Kelvin Benjamin. Travis Benjamin. Rashad Duncan. North for three miles. Jesse Hester. San Antonio Holmes. James Lee, Barkevius Mingo, Jimmy Moreland, mm -hmm. Lewis Oliver, Fred Taylor, Deontay Thompson, mm -hmm. Andre Waters, and Rondi Weston. And they are all NFL players. NFL players, yeah. Those are all NFL players from this one little town. <clears throat> yeah, they, this is a town of champions right here, man. All right, y'all. Checking out from Belgrade, Florida. I hope you guys liked the video. Shout out to everybody from the BG, Belgrade. Everybody from Belgrade, Clewiston, Moorhaven, South Bay. Thank you so much for watching the video. And we're out. There it is. Bug laid.